I'm Barbara Slay, and I'm the author of Mueller Report Graphic Novel, which I guess makes me a graphic novelist. If your faith in the United States government has been shaken by political developments over the last three years, you're apparently right where the political leaders and oligarchs of Russia want you to be. Oh, and President Donald Trump and his aides are likely complicit in this result. Those are among the clear takeaways from Special Counsel Robert Mueller's massive two-year, 400-plus page report that few of us have read, including most Republicans serving in the House House of Representatives and the Senate. Since we're Americans living in the 21st century, we need everything boiled down and spoon-fed with splendid simplicity. Now, sure, that's what CNN and MSNBC have done with the Mueller report. But graphic novelist Barbara Slate, a frequent guest to this show, has gone them one step further. She's adopted it into a comic book. Mueller Report, Graphic Novel, Volume 1 and Volume 2, reduced the horrifying tracking Hacking, I'm sorry, reduced the horrifying hacking of American democracy to its essence in just 30, 32 pages packed with political cheating and anti-American conspiracies. Our mutual friend, the late Will Eisner, the father of educational comics in the 1940s, would be so proud of Barbara. <laughs> Barbara Slate, welcome back to Mr. Media. Wow, Will would be proud. I think he would that be. Makes me happy. I think so, too. He was, as you know, he was such a proponent of using comics to, to do more than just entertain, you know, eight and nine-year-olds. He, wanted, he always wanted them to educate. He, you know, he taught generations of uh, military how to use their, clean their guns and keep them, keep them operational, their, their, their tanks. Right, their gun. right, 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 right. And, and yeah. so when I saw this, I thought this seems right in line. This is like the latest... Uh, generation of an educational comic as far as i'm concerned yeah yeah so i i, I was thinking of of will when i when i read it um oh. but now let's talk about having a thankless job here why on earth did you elect to bring the Mueller report to life in graphic novel form how does is that by accident was that on purpose what what happened oh i i had i looked at it and i said well I wonder which one of my friends is going to do the graphic novel of the Mueller report. There was no way I was going to do it. I looked at that thing. Did you ever see it? Did you see it? I've I mean, it's yeah. enormous. It, you, anyway, I said, no way. There's no way I was going to do it. But I was anxious to see who was going to do it. And um, I kept looking at it. And I, for some reason, I was on Twitter. And I was following a thread on Jen Tal. And I don't know what came over me, but I just typed in, I'm thinking of doing a graphic novel. But, you know, thinking about it doesn't really mean doing it. So I was pretty clear. Mm -hmm. And then I was out to lunch with, oh, and then she wrote back immediately, oh, I'd love for you to do that. I can't wait to see it. So, okay. Then I went out with a friend of mine and I, I liked the response. So I kind of sent it out there again. And uh, her and my friend put down her coffee and looked at me, like leaned over and said, "You have to do this." So, uh, great response. So I went home and I downloaded it, and I looked at it and I looked at it again and again and again. And so my process in doing it was that just taking about five, four or five pages, and reading it. And the first time I read it. The first time I read anything, mostly, I I don't get it, although something happens and I get a little bit of it, although I don't even know that I got it. But if you read it three, four, five, six, seven times, which is what I did for each of those sections, all of a sudden I start seeing a story and panels. And so I did one page. And I put it on Twitter, and boom, like that, I got so much, so many, I had 50 followers on Twitter, because I don't tweet much. Mm. And all of a sudden, within, uh, I would say, two days, I went from 50 Twitter followers, is that what you call them, mm-hmm. to 1,500. I mean, wow. it was almost overnight. And then, of course, in on Facebook, also the same thing, and all my friends were very supportive. 
And you know what it's like, Bob, when you're a freelancer, you sit in your studio by yourself for hour after hour after hour. And, and I had all these friends and they were like cheerleading me on. And so it really encouraged me to do it every day. And that's what I did, a page a day, every day. And there were some sometimes when I, it was so, uh, t- um, uh, what's the word? It, 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 there, was so, there was so much going on in it. There's a word for that, that I, um, I, I would just sit there. And I remember one night I was almost in tears because I, I couldn't understand what he was saying. And, uh, and Richard, who's my, um, we've been together for 30 years. I, he's my boyfriend, but, you know, I feel so ridiculous at my age calling my boyfriend. <laughs> he's my boyfriend. And he came in, and he's so smart. And uh, I started, I, I, I wanted him to say, here, let me read it, and I'll tell you. But instead, he said, I'm going to watch the Yankees. <laughs> so I, I was kind of on my own. And uh, so that's what I did. I just struggled through it. And I, ha- I made and my process, really, I started understanding what my process was, and being frustrated was really part of my process. Mm. Had you had you ever ad- uh, adapted anything before in any? Uh, yes, any I did. Like? I adapted uh, "Men Are from Mars, Women Are from Venus." I did that as that was a big book. Oh, and I didn't I, know that. I took that down to a. A little graphic novel, a pretty little book that you can read in the bathroom, which is really, <laughs> <laughs> that's the ultimate. If you can read it in the bathroom, I got it. So, yeah, I did that. And then I've also adapted um, instruct, instructions in with toys, uh, uh, things that were really difficult to read. You know, it's amazing that you that the lettering is too small and there's no breathing room on the page mm-hmm. and so I would make pamphlets out of that so yeah I, I've been doing that and I love doing that so Will would be proud again I was you were reading my mind I was going to say that's exactly what he would do he would take these yeah. complicated uh, military manuals and make them s- so that uh, anyone could understand them and I think that's yeah really what, I, I figured what you've if done. I can understand it anybody can understand it and that and and I also have a, a really good boring meter so I kind of know when something starts to get tedious, mm. and, uh, and 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 that's really a a way that I work on the book. I just think, are you bored? And as, if I'm bored, then my reader's going to be bored. So I condense the panels or take some out. I want to. I'm, I'm going to take a second and explain uh, something about about Will and how he did things because I think it has. Uh, I didn't plan this ahead, so uh, but I, I think I think it has a, a meaning here. Uh, the reason that he started doing these educational comics for the military, he was in the military, and what they were finding at the start of World War II was that uh, you know they were they were getting all these recruits from all over the country. There were no standard. We didn't really have standardized uh, education at the time. We weren't all uh, reading uh, the same materials. Uh, you weren't. The expectations were different in Kentucky than they were in Manhattan or L.A. or, or Dallas or Chicago from Des Moines. Or, and I'm just picking on big cities there. But um, the idea was that by translating material that was otherwise in, in these very ponderous, thick military ma- manuals, um, That's the word ponderous. Yeah, yeah, and you could <laughs> yeah. you could get it down to where anybody with any background could look at the yeah. images and see what they were supposed to do, even exactly. if they if they didn't understand all the words. And that's I th- right. I think that's relevant to today because this is like four hundred plus pages. A lot of people, even in the, in government, sadly, haven't read it, even though they really need to read it and know what's going on. I mean, some of them just want to live in the dark. I get that. But it's the same type of thing where we have we have members of Congress, and, and I, I want to say this politely, who have very different uh, education. It's, it's yeah. Go, I, I, I I just I cannot believe when I hear that they don't when when they say no, I didn't read it. I'm like, what are you doing? That's yeah. your job. Yeah. You know, read the thing. You know, you've got to be kidding. So I, I'm doing this for the members of Congress also. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. Have you either had any requests from anyone in Congress or have you and Richard, who I know is involved in publishing this, yeah. um, have you just sent them 
Yes, we did. We sent it out. We sent uh, we sent to Bob Mueller. Yeah. My my right my co right my co part my partner. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know it, but he's my partner. I sent it to him, and who knows if he got it? But and then we sent it to um, yeah we we sent it to uh, members of. You know, if Richard were here, he would tell you exactly the, the list. But yes, we've sent it to Congress. So, yes. so I mean, should would every member of Congress have received a copy of this, or at least I don't know if every member, but okay. many have. Okay. And then, of course, we sent it to gave it to our congressman. Yep. Uh, yeah. So yeah. All right. Good on you for doing that. Yeah, that's what I that's what I kind of wondered about. And uh, tell me about doing a page a day. You have to be. Now, you were telling me before we went on the air that uh, you get up at like three or four o'clock in the morning just yep. by rote. Mm-hmm. So tell me about fitting into your your day because you teach and you do a lot of things. Uh, doing a page a day, and there were thirty two pages, I believe. Thirty two in the first, and right now I'm on the second volume, and I am on page forty five. Oh. And I've gone ahead and laid out the rest of it. And so I'm, the second volume, I think, is going to be close to 70 pages. I thought that the second volume was going to be 30 pages also because that's the way it was in the report, you know, 30 pages. Anyway, no, the second volume is filled with dialogue, which I'm thrilled about. The dialogue is it's crazy. You just I, I can't believe I, I, it's really hard to believe what is going on at that White House. So, uh, you know, anyway, I, I have the dialogue. So, yeah, so I get up at three and I'm on I'm at my computer and um, I like to do I like to write and I like to draw. And so I move around in the book. I just don't go one page because if if I do one page and I don't know what's coming up next, I get panicked. Mm. So. I lay out the pages so I know what's coming next. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, and by the time 9 o'clock comes around, I am uh, ready for dinner. <laughs> and uh, and it, it's, it's fine. I like getting up early. I like having that. I like having no noise. And, um, and so I'm fine. But I do do a lot of teaching. And that's good. It gets me out because some days I literally do not go out and I'm in my pajamas for a few days. And um, it's okay. That gets, you know, I figure maybe in 10 years that's the way I'm going to be living. So I'm getting used to it. (laughs) How do you decide? I mean, it's 400 some pages between the two volumes, the original, and it's packed with stuff. How do you do? How have you decided? What to put into the, the the graphic novel, which is a uh, an abbreviated version, certainly yeah. abridged. Um, how do you decide what what goes in and what doesn't? Is it a matter of following certain plot lines, if you will? I, I don't mean to diminish it as entertainment. The, the, the but first, the first one, there's you. It, I really had to go and pick things out and make a story. So mm-hmm. it's got to be a story, and each page can tell a story, but it has to it has to keep the reader involved. So I try to, I try to take out the parts. When I say take out, that means put into the graphic novel the parts that he, that Mueller would have thought was important. Although I, I, I kind of get what he's doing now, and um, so I take the important parts, and and I, th- there are sometimes when. Um, something doesn't hit me. And when I go back and read it the sixth or the seventh time, I go, oh, how did I forget that? And I go and I put that back in. So it's just picking out and making sure it reads that each panel follows the next in the story. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess that's that's what I do. But, um, you know, to, to make it, de- the first volume, to make it down to 30-some pages, I really think I caught most of it. I've shown it to Jen Taub, who was my inspiration in the beginning, who said, you've got to do this. And she said, it's amazing how you pick out the parts that are important. Now, Jen is a lawyer and she's, a, a, you know, she teaches law. So when she said that, it was like a big phew. <laughs> so. Well, it's it seems like in volume one, you, the, the main focus is the Russian uh, 
story. That's what it is. Right? Yeah. Did you yeah. read this? Oh, yeah. No, I, I did. Okay, I, I read okay, it good. yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, I, oh, good. I read through every page, every word of it, uh, of, of, of the graphic novel. I have not read Oh, okay. No, I was no, asking I, you if you no, read No, I'm the... sorry. No, I, I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm one of those uh, Americans that have not read the entire thing. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. That, yeah. So you, you, um, you got it. You kind yeah, of read it, I'm, and it gives you a lot of information. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I, I mean, I followed the story very closely. Uh, Good. You and I are friends in social media, so you're probably already aware that I've been sharing a lot of stories, uh, political stories, and stuff relative to it over yes. time. So I, I've been very interested in it. I have not, uh, I have not read the original, but I did read yours word for word. And what I found interesting is that um, it, it, just the way that it follows the story, the, the main storyline, which I think was so important about Russian interference which now the uh, Republican Senate is completely ignoring, uh, to, probably to our great detriment. Um, but, uh, yeah. There, the, there, was, there was so much interference, so much. Um, do you think anything, this calls for political judgment, I guess, do you think that anything will ever be done with, with the report, or do you think that it's just going to be buried? I mean, it's oh, out, it but is, it just seems yeah. like nothing is happening. I, I I don't think so. I think that it's out, and little by little, it's seeping through. And of course, having him on TV, I thought was great. Yeah. And uh, you know, it just it takes a while before all to, to gather all this information. But uh, I I don't see how it cannot make a big difference. Mm. And and I and I'm happy that I'm doing this report be, uh, as a graphic novel, and and that's another reason I I'm so obsessed with it. I mean I think about it all day long. Uh, that's all Richard and I talk about, unfortunately or fortunately, <laughs> and uh, and I, I I I'm so like at night I think about the page and then I get up and I can't wait to do it. This is the most exciting project I have to say that I've ever done, and I've done a lot of really wonderful projects. Mm. But this, I, I feel so passionate about, and um, I, I, I think that this is, it's going to make all the difference <laughs> once it comes out. I it's, hope so. Everybody's going to say, oh, that's what happened. You know, that's a dream. But I, I think that once it does come out, it's such an easy read mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, my daughter, who's not political at all, uh, read it and said, okay, this is good, Mommy. I can understand it. And and also, everybody's talking about politics, and everybody's talking about the Mueller report. They are. And so if you're sitting around at, at a cocktail party, you want to look at the graphic novel before you go so you can add something or say something and, and be part of the conversation. It's so, uh, it's just every, to me, it's it's what's happening every, every day. There's You can't go anywhere without somebody talking about when was the last time you had a conversation where Trump wasn't mentioned? When? Oh yeah, no, I agree. I was. I just took an Uber back home about an hour ago, and uh, it turned out the driver was a Cuban uh, emigre who came here 14 years ago, and and I I, I was talking about uh, as we're recording this, it's early in August, and uh, yesterday the ice. Uh, swooped down in Mississippi and grabbed 680 people <laughs> and left their left their kids uh, not knowing what had happened to their parents and okay. all that kind of thing. And I was talking to him about that and I was saying these, you know, you have the lunatics running the asylum. And, and he looked at me and I said, do you know that expression? And I was describing and I, I never used the word Trump, but he knew exactly what I was talking about and who yeah. I was talking about. Um, well, I wanted to ask you, uh, in obviously the, the drawings in the, the graphic novel are yours and your interpretation of the people. Um, I thought it was really interesting that you do not... Well, and, okay, let me, let me put this in the form of a question. Um, how do you decide uh, where to draw the characters and where to caricature? The, you know, I mean, you, you, draw yeah. Trump, you draw Trump as kind of a big, puffy character, but he's not a caricature in the book. Um, and and I, don't, I don't really find that anyone had been really caricatured uh, the way. Okay, good. So, so, uh, how do you decide though? What's you know what's the right line to not cross in terms of? I, I, you know, I when I'm finished with the second volume, I'm going to go over the first and the second together, and we're putting into a 
graphic novel. So mm-hmm. it's going to, it's right now it's going to be in two comics and then I put it into a graphic novel. So I'm going to have to go from the beginning and look at it because I think my style has changed as mm-hmm. I go along and uh, I want to make the, all the characters consistent. I looked at my, uh, McGann was different in the beginning than he is now. Mm-hmm. Um, or was, yeah. Um, so, or that was previous actually was different, different now. So I just want to keep my characters consistent. And what I do is I, um, the characters are so amazing. And that's what's fun. Half the time when I, I don't know who the, who they are or what they look like, or I've seen them on TV, but somebody like uh, Papadopoulos. Mm-hmm. Now, he's a character. He's always wearing these sunglasses. And I decided to always have him in sunglasses, whether he's at a meeting or not, just because he stands out. Now, that's a real character. Mm-hmm. And uh, just his personality as a character, because this is a guy who's looking for a job. Right. And, you know, and it turns out that Trump is in the media. You know, people, the, the press is saying, tell us about your foreign uh, uh, your foreign group. Who's, who is, who's your team? And he don't know. So he goes, get me a foreign team. And Papalopoulos, who's been, who has been rejected uh, to be a foreign and whatever, he all of a sudden pops up in an email like, oh, let's get this guy. So, so he kind of comes there as this, you know, I don't know whether it's luck or bad luck, but he, he's a character. And then I follow his story. I kind of like his story because now he's in Hollywood with his blonde wife mm. and they are on the cover of magazines. <laughs> Just, it's amazing. It's insane. And, and the other characters that, uh, you know, all the Russians, I go on uh, Google and I see their pictures and I look at them and they're great characters. You know, when I start doing caricatures or characters, I, I actually did characters for Bloomingdale's for a season, and I got really good at that. But then I haven't done them in uh, maybe 40 years, mm. 40 years. Wow. So now I'm back doing them. So now when I look at a face, I immediately see what needs to be exaggerated. And that takes a while to train my eye, but now I'm really good at it. So I go to on Google and I, I go to image and then I look at all their images hmm. and then I look at the cartoons of them and then I can kind of figure out, you know, do they have a really big forehead? Uh, it, all, all, but all the characters, every one of them I uh, is extraordinarily interesting to draw. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the the one that some of the girls are a little more difficult, like Hope Hicks. I love watching her when she walks down. You know the, you know just with that straight expression. And of course Ivanka, you know, Daddy Daddy. And uh, you know so I capture something about them. And uh, so I watch MSNBC all day long. <laughs> so I catch up that way right and then um i watched rachel one night and i was having problems with this character uh jody um i forget his last name so i kept thinking oh jody went with sessions and was taking notes and i thought "Mm, do i want to really put a secretary in there you know i had just had this image that jody was a girl but no jody's this guy Uh very important guy becoming more and more important as time goes on because he was in with all the meetings with sessions and trump Mm. so uh uh, went back and put jody in there and uh so you know i i'm catching things from from the media but uh it's mostly in i mostly follow the book um the uh the Mueller report Mm -hmm. but i do go out and put some panels in that he that are not in the the book that I think are important. Yeah, I, I've been letting myself have more fun actually. Okay, so I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, in in volume one, for example, are it, the words that we read are they straight from the book, or have you uh, have you paraphrased? Have you uh, edited? Or how how, how is that? How is the how is that it's, done? It's 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 straight from the book. Okay. Uh, sometimes when there's a whole paragraph, I'll skip a couple lines, but the the words are straight from the book. 
I have taken a little bit of poetic license, but not much. I mean, his writing, how, how could I not use his writing? I mean, his writing is very thorough and, uh, you know, really um, tells the story. I have to ask you, because you, you speak in such tones about Robert Mueller, comedian uh, Chelsea Handler has talked about how she thinks he's like the sexiest man in, on the planet, and she, she desperately wants him. Uh, I, I, I know, I, and I would, I would, I mean, I don't think Richard would mind, but I would fight her for him. I so, have the same feeling. So you think Richard would give you a hall pass for, for Mueller? No doubt. Ah. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, There's uh, no doubt, no doubt. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm with her. I'm okay. definitely with her. All right, good to know. It's funny to see that as a, you know, there's just, you know, he kind of, and I don't mean this as a, I don't know what the word is. I, I, I'm losing my words, Bob. But, uh, you know, there's just something about seeing him come on stage and his, you know, he's kind of, but he's 75 and he's kind of, he's tall and he's standing up, but he's kind of slumped over too. And there's just something that is just, um, is endearing the word. I don't know what the word is, sexy, all those things. But yeah, I, funny that you should ask. Hmm. <laughs> well, all right, then I'll, let me ask you this. Besides, and he makes me want to cry, too. I mean, oh. I listen to him, and I, I just think everything's going to be all right with the world when I listen to him. So, you know, that's being naive, too. But, uh, yeah, I, I get I get Chelsea. Well, besides Mueller, did you, uh, you know, in something like this that you've worked on so much, did you develop a, a favorite character after Robert Mueller? Well, Papadopoulos, yeah. because I finally got to pronounce the name right. That was one <laughs> thing. But I also saw him on TV a lot, and there was something about, you know, he's so dark. He's mm -hmm. so, his hair is so black, and and then he's got this wife, this blonde wife who's kind of like, um, uh, you know, I think they they just got married. I don't, I don't know, but there's just something. She, she kind of looked like Bridget Bardot, and I just saw them as such great characters, you know. So I kind of liked him. And then I have to say, there was one moment where um, I uh, I felt for Trump, and um, I, I tried to be neutral. By the way, I didn't make this. I didn't want to bash. I followed the report. It's not like I was bashing him. Right. Yeah. Really absolutely. Not. Yeah, you didn't. Uh, you, you didn't. You you had every opportunity, but you didn't take it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't. And But there was a, a moment when um, Mueller said, um, it, it was when he, you know, when the Access Hollywood tape came out. And uh, I said, oh, let me just go. You can find anything on the computer, which is miraculous. You know, I said, let me just go to the Access Hollywood. So I went there and I listened to Trump talk you know it's very easy you know grab him by the pussy and all that but if you listen to the whole recording and i did four five six times listen to it there's one point where he gets rejected by this woman he's trying to get her and he goes i went in there like a bitch but you know she didn't really respond and uh, I, I'll admit it. She didn't respond. He says, so I took her furniture. She wanted to go furniture shopping. So I took her furniture shopping. And I thought, isn't that, I, I just thought that there's something endearing about here. He couldn't get her, but he went furniture shopping with her. And it's like a guy who can't get a girl. Right. So he'll do anything, you know, mm -hmm. let's do this. And he'll follow her around all day long. And that's, that was one of the moments where I, I kind of thought that was sweet, actually. So, yeah, that was one moment. <laughs> Interesting. See, I thought of that as desperate. Well, you're I, when, a guy. When, well, when he decided that he was going to take her furniture shopping after she had already turned him down, why she was still spending time with him, I don't know at that point. But She wanted to go furniture shopping, yeah. and he knew the best places. Yeah, yeah. Because he has all the free time in the world, it's even now. <laughs> even now. I'm sure if she called up and said, Donald. 
let's go furniture shopping. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> he would fly out Air Force One and land there and say, let's go. I, I have let's no look doubt. At tables. I'll, I'll take a day off from playing golf. I'll take you furniture shopping. <laughs> no, so you're the one that's bashing him. I'm not, right? I, no, that's true. Uh, and I'm just, I think I'm just stating fact, really. I, I think that I that's know. what he would do. I, um, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, my, my, my approach to all this, like on social media, generally has been to just share the stories and, and I, I try to yeah. withhold commenting. Although sometimes I just can't help myself. I just will You write. can't help yourself. I will just but say you idiot. Know who's el- who else is an interesting character is McGann. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's becoming more and more relevant because, you know, they're trying to get him to testify. But I, wa- I follow his story, too. And uh, right now... I'm at the point where he's, he's, I just finished the story where he says, no, I am not going to do that. I think Trump wanted him to, I forget what he wanted him to do. He wanted him to fire Mueller, didn't he? Ah. Right. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. You must have read the graphic novel. Right. He wanted him to fire Mueller. Yeah. And he, and he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And so, um, he, that was his line, uh, line in the sand and he was going to quit. He was going to resign. And, of course, he didn't at the time because he was talked out of it by Priebus and um, Bannon. They said, don't resign. So he went back to work and, and everything was forgotten, which is the really the end of almost every one of these stories. There's all this drama and all of this madness created. And how are we going to keep Trump from, uh, you know, from... Uh, him being responsible for fire, who, from firing Mara. We've got to keep that out. Or what was the one where he was, um, how, how are we going to, every, everything is, everybody's trying to protect him. And then the last panel, Trump comes out and says, oh, yeah, I, everybody would have taken that meeting at, uh, with the Russians. Who wouldn't have? So all these people are running around trying to get him not to not to say that and trying to get the media to go in a different direction. And he, in the last panel, comes out and says, yeah, 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 that's what I did. That's, mm. so what? That is, that's the story, which I, I it's so hard to believe. And, and I'm sure they all look at him while he's doing it and they're going, oh, no. But then he continues on. Yeah. So it, it's, it's quite a story. Well, I think what some people miss about McGahn, uh, and I think part of the reason that they really did not want to lose him in the White House is that the, the, his big accomplishment, if if you're on that side of things, is that he he found Kavanaugh, uh, he shepherded Kavanaugh, he got Kavanaugh in, onto the Supreme Court, and he's the mastermind, as I understand it, behind these 140 or so uh, federal judges that Trump has placed in the judiciary. Uh. One in... One in four, I guess one in four uh, federal judges now was appointed oh. by Trump, and that was McGahn's doing. He was the one who oh. found the judges. I think he was the one who masterminded, you know, if we oh. could do this. So, uh, you know, why people start to think maybe McGahn is, uh, he could be the hero of the story by bringing Trump down. He's the guy who put all the judges in place that are now slowly but surely... Oh allowing the Trump administration wow. to get away with everything they've done. So he's well, not exactly a hero of the story. Oh, wow. You okay. Know. Thank you for telling me that. I'm yeah. going to have to change my drawing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he, but he always has this kind of frown. He's got this line that goes right over here on his eye, hmm. uh, right over, and it really, it really makes him. It's like that's the line who he is. So um, that's interesting. Now, uh, has there been anything you've 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 read the report six, seven, ten, fifty-two times? Um, has there been anything that you've found that uh, did had America, most Americans, even if they haven't read it, that you know they've heard about it? Is there is there something that they've missed particularly that they would have gotten by reading it that they haven't gotten by by letting the media spoon feed them? It, the whole thing. I mean, I watch MSNBC and I. I, I watch Rachel and um, Nicole Wallace. Those are my two. And, uh, and Morning Joe. Yeah. Although sometimes Morning Joe is so difficult in the morning, you know, just. But uh, so, yeah, as much as I watch them, there's nothing like reading it. Hmm. So, yeah, I you, you miss 
you really miss a lot. Um, but you know, the thing as this graphic novel, the thing that's most interesting to me is the way it all fizzles out in the end. It just becomes a big nothing. Yeah. But hopefully that's going to change because I think that, I, I think that they're going to get down to some of the the obstructions. I mean, there are so many of them, and uh, and and also the col- the col- no collusion, the collusion. Yeah. I mean, the 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 buddy buddy with conspiracy. Russia. I always think of it as conspiracy since he's yeah. since collusion is an illegal term. Yeah, yeah, and how they really that you know even now. I mean, when you see him with Putin. He is a very happy man. He really likes being with that guy. Yeah. There's something about him. So, yeah. I know. He doesn't act like, like Putin's got anything on him. He acts like, man, I just like being with this guy and doing whatever he wants me to do. It's, well, it's that's, weird. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Um, do, you, uh, do, do you worry now – you you've been in comics, you know, in graphic novels now, pretty much your your whole career, much of it. You go yeah. way back with stuff. Uh, uh, you you've done Beauty and the Beast, you've done Archie comics, you did Barbie comics, and you've done these graphic novels. The uh, uh, you've been on this show to talk about your your book. Uh, you can you can do a graphic novel and getting uh, married and other mistakes. Thank you. Yes, I, I was just, <laughs> just going to look quickly to my right to grab that title. Um, but do you worry at all that by converting the the the, the ponderous uh, Mueller report uh, into a comic into a graphic novel that there will be people who will um, they'll feel like it, it it's not right to do that to something so serious. Oh, well, you well, I do get a lot of that on um, media, social media. Mm. I get a lot of uh, well, actually, I'm getting Russian. Uh, you know, I get I, I'm getting a lot of well, I'm getting a lot of people who say this is the worst thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> the drawings are awful. The writing is terrible. Uh, you know, don't bother. It's stupid. You know, and you know, they're. You know, there are people who are trolling me. Sure. So I do get that. And uh, uh, luckily, I am used to that because um, I've gotten some, I get a lot of great reinforcements, but I also have gotten some really terrible reviews on some of my projects, like Angel Love. You know, people were very upset about that. And, you know, that was too out there in the 80s. So I'm kind of used to being criticized and it doesn't seem to bother me anymore. That's good. That's good. Because there's a lot of people out there that are just trolling for their own purposes. And yeah. They're just not, they're not, you it know. bothers me when, you know, all of a sudden my rating on Amazon goes from a five star to a three mm. because somebody has given me a one star. And, uh, you know, th- th- that bothers me. I think, uh, gee, I, you know, I'd like it to be up there. But, you know, what are you going to do? You, I don't, you can't c- c- control that stuff. My, uh, a couple of years ago, my son was complaining because, I don't know, he had posted something on Instagram, some drawings that he had done or, or something. And there have been a couple of people who were just really cruel about it. Very, and he yeah. said, And I said, well, I'm sorry. I said, you know, we all know how that is. You don't know how it is. You don't, you never, no one ever says anything bad about you. I said, oh, let me take you to the Mr. Media YouTube channel. And you can read some of the comments there because they are just... Uh, Brutal. Oh my God, it's just brutal. And you have to make up your mind at some point to just keep doing what you're doing. You know, when when people give you constructive criticism, I'm all for it. You know, uh, this this show, as a matter of fact, this podcast has changed dramatically over the 13 years I've been doing it because people have have made really constructive uh, suggestions. That's good. But uh, you know, the ones that just heap on. Foul yeah. language and and just you know they, they yeah. oh it's just awful but you have to yeah. just turn a blind eye at some point you just can't let it stop yeah. you from being you yeah yeah it's uh it's it's kind of you know the thing is that with all the I, with all my Twitter followers now which is incredible I mean I've got close to three thousand now mm-hmm. and I just think oh I I'm sending this out and. 
3,000 people, and they're, they're, you know, they're not all looking at it. But I do have people who look at it all the time, you know, that follow me. You know, I, I see them, I go, okay, and they comment. So it's, it's really a, a remarkable thing to have that kind of feedback. And it's mostly so positive and uh, just, it's, it's exciting. I, I, I'm enjoying it. Hmm. So, you know, the one out of, I don't know, 50 who says something awful, I mean, of course, I look at it and read it, and then I go, what do they know? And, but, it, 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 it's, I, you know, I keep thinking it doesn't bother me, and I think, well, does it bother me? But maybe I'm just used to it by now, or maybe I'm just so busy doing this that it doesn't, you know, when I, when I finish it, I could have a really big cry. Mm. You know, I haven't <laughs> really cried in a long time, and I'm overdue. All right. I'm over to you for that one sobbing day. <laughs> <laughs> well, get your work done first. Um, I will. So as we as we kind of wrap up, uh, let's let's recap the availability of Mueller Report graphic novel volume one and two. As we're talking, volume one is out. It's in basically kind of a comic book form. It's about thirty two pages. Right. Uh, you're finishing volume two. Volume right. Two will be out September seventh. Yes, and that's going to be at the, I'm reading this now from, it's going to be at the Brooklyn Antiquarium Book Fair. And um, that, it it was funny because um, what they wanted me to do was some kind of a presentation. And I I don't have it together to do a presentation about Mueller at this point. I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to say. So this, that oh, I'll do my, I have a couple of talks. I've got my life in comics and then I've got another one about creative tips. I'm like, no, nobody wants to hear that at this point. You know, this is about Mueller. So I'm having a read in. Hmm. And so anybody can come and read a page. I'm going to put it on screen, put the book on screen and then Everybody can come and read a page from it. So uh, that was exciting. And so now I have, I don't know, I have like six or seven people who've already signed up. So we're going to just do it like that and have a read-in. So kind of like the vagina monologues of uh, political conspiracies. Yes. Or, <laughs> or you know, these, uh, or the, um, all these celebrities who are reading from the Mueller report. Mm-hmm. But they're reading characters uh, mine is going to be right from the re- from the graphic novel, so I'm excited about that. And that way, I don't have to think about what I'm going to say about it, because you know, unless I'm talking to somebody like you, who brings it out, then I'm standing there asking myself questions. And so this is going to be fun. So that's coming in um, uh, Saturday, September seventh, and and Sunday the eighth. And there'll be a version after Volume Two is out. There'll be a version that people can buy that's volume one and two combined, right? Like that's going to be the, gra- that's going to be the graphic novel. Okay. Yes. Makes a so great Christmas be- present, right? Yes. That's going to be about a hundred pages and uh, we're putting in all the characters and who they are. And then all the things that, um, you know, that I, I have little notes about is going to be in the back. I'm doing a lot. Um, what is it? The, anyway, uh, there's, yeah, there's going to be an index and, uh, you know, all the characters. You should, so do, that's you should include a transcription of this interview. <laughs> I'll do a transcription of this interview. Okay, okay. There and maybe go. Mueller will do it and do a graphic novel of ours. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. Um, all right. Well, folks, listen. You can find uh, uh, Barbara Slate's book, Mueller Report Graphic Novel, Volumes 1 and 2, or Volume 1, or Volume 2. You can get it separately, or by the time you get this, you should be able to get it together. Uh, And great stores everywhere, or you can order it right now at a great price at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Oh, okay. Uh, We'll have it available for sale on the site. And uh, the way that works, below the video uh, of Barbara, you'll see the cover of the book. You can click on it. It'll take you to Amazon. You can order it there. It should be available, correct? Okay. It, It is available on Amazon. There you go. See, I yeah. tell no lies. And you then, tell no, you are not a liar. I am not a liar. Uh, no matter you what anyone, in this book. <laughs> no matter all those lies that people tell about me, I'm not a liar. Um, and your website, barbaraslate.com? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and also, uh, Mueller Report Graphic Novel. 
Facebook.com. We have a blog and we've got a website and yeah, Richard has just set the whole thing up. Yeah, he's been amazing. Oh, great. Okay. And then uh, you're on Twitter and I know you're on Facebook. Yes. Uh, what? What? How do people find you on Twitter particularly? Are how you, do they find me are on you Bar- Twitter? Are you Barbara Slate? Are you? Yeah, Bar- Barbara Slate. Okay. All right, great. I, you're, you're asking me things that I'm just doing. I don't even know. These are um, the tough questions, I know. Yes, I know. these are the tough questions. Find well, me on Twitter. Well, Barbara, uh, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, since we've been doing the interviews, we actually got to meet in person at uh, North Carolina. Uh, uh, I don't remember what it's called up there, but we Heroes Con, was that it? Yeah, we've been, we've, it was um, Wizard World. We were at, we were at the Wizard World together. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, I, I see you around, yeah. and this is like our what twentieth interview. <laughs> we How have many talked, interviews have we had? We, we have talked a number of times, yeah. Yes. And, and Richard's been on the show too. So, folks, if you if you enjoyed this conversation, go look in the archive, search Barbara Slate or Richard Minsky, and you can you can see the interviews uh, with both of them there. Um, always a pleasure to see you, and thanks so much today for joining us on Mister Media. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Receiver